Hello everyone, we are getting sassy again in today's video. Today I'm doing a twist on Amelia Rose video that she posted back on Saturday talking about five bags that she wished that she had bought sooner because of price increases. Well today I'm talking about five bags that I will not be buying because of price increases and I'm very interested to know what bags fall into that category for you so I'd appreciate if you'd leave a comment down below as I do this YouTube channel to get to interact with people and it's a very fun hobby for me but the thing that I love most is getting to interact so please leave a comment down below hit the like button if you enjoy this video hit the red subscribe button if you enjoy it as well and if you enjoy any type of luxury videos particularly if they get a bit sassy so with that let's jump right into it Now I will say, I hope that no one gets offended at this. This is me personally, what I won't buy. If it's a bag that you want, if it's a bag that you want to buy, don't let me say otherwise. Don't let me take away your joy. So the first one is probably one that has come off of a lot of people's list because of the price increases. And that is going to be the Chanel Classic Flap, no matter what size it is. This bag is over $8,000 now. I'm just not paying that. The bag is not an overly practical bag. It's not a bag that particularly fits me as far as like actually fitting and looking right on me. The only one that really looks right is the small and it doesn't hold a whole lot. The classic flap for me, it's just too much money. I don't think that the quality is there. Yes, I know that the resale value is there, but if I'm buying that bag, I'm buying it to have. And I think that the other big turnoff for me is that honestly, I had the opportunity to get one of the classic flaps in a small or a medium in the most classic colors and combo right before the first of the big price increases happened back when these were like, I think it was like $5,300 for the small, 5,600 maybe for the medium. And I was looking at a black with silver hardware in the small, a black with gold hardware in the medium, a beige with silver hardware in the small, and a beige with gold hardware in the medium, right before those first price increases. And even at the time I was like, oh man, like spending that much on a bag, like I just don't know if I could do that. Then two weeks later, the first price increase. Then a few months later, the second price increase. And a few months later, the third price increase. And by the time that we got to that third price increase, one, like I was kicking myself for not getting it when it was less expensive. But two, it just got to the point where I was like, because I missed out on it being such a great price, I just can't, I can't buy it at this new price. It's just too much compared to what it was for me. And for that reason, you guys are never going to see a classic flap unless it's a very vintage one entering my collection. Now, the second bag is a bag from Louis Vuitton, and it is a bag that Louis Vuitton is trying to make be its premium ultimate, you must have this as a Louis Vuitton lover luxury bag, and that is the Louis Vuitton Capucines. Now, a lot of people love the Capucines. For me, I was very briefly drawn to it, and then it had a big price increase, and that kind of turned me off. But after that, I then found the Fendi Peekaboo, which is a very similar style bag. And I prefer the Peekaboo because I prefer the quality on it. I prefer that it is more structured as opposed to the little bit more rounded look of the Capucines. Plus, the only versions of this bag that I've ever like fallen in love with were very special versions. And obviously the price is even more expensive with those. When I look at the Capucine, I just, I'm not drawn to the Capucine nearly as much after seeing the Peekaboo. I like the Peekaboo quality better. I really love that bag. And the Capucines, the ridiculous price increases that they've done, given that it's a bag that doesn't hold its value, no, not ever gonna happen. You're never seeing that bag in my collection. Now, bag number three is from a brand that I actually don't have anything in, and I don't necessarily know if I ever will add anything in, and that is going to be from Prada, and it is the Prada Crystal Re-Edition. Now, when it comes to crystal bags, Prada does them better than anybody, but when the crystal trends were really starting to pick up, particularly last year, 
I was really looking at getting a Prada crystal re-edition, whether it be in like a monotone nylon with the crystals on it or the black with the silver crystals on it that's sort of like the most classic one. I was looking at the, the cross body, the Clio, the regular shoulder re-edition. And the thing that was holding me back at the time was I was like, man, like this with tax is gonna be like $2,000 for a bag. What if one of the sparkles comes off? If one of those crystals comes off, it will just ruin the bag for me forever. And now I started looking at the price again because they have this gorgeous green that is out. But this bag with tax is now like $3,000 people. 3,000 for a bag that in a few years or maybe even in just a couple of years is going to be out of style. And I don't wanna pay $3,000 for a bag that I know the second one thing happens, bag's ruined for me. Because Prada also does not hold its value and neither does the crystal re-edition, particularly if the crystals are missing. So for me, even whether it's the crossbody version, the shoulder bag version, the Clio version. I was already on the fence before the price increases, but now that it's up to $3,000, that's just not happening for me. Now, bag number four, I guess technically it's not a bag, but there are a lot of people who like to use it as a bag, and it's certainly at a bag level price at this point, and that is going to be the Louis Vuitton Mini Pochette. Now, there are a lot of people on YouTube who are like, oh, you have to have a mini pochette in your collection. No, you don't have to have a mini pochette in your collection. But when in 2020, I started really watching YouTube, seeing all these people have the mini pochette, I was like, oh my goodness, I need a mini pochette. I don't even know what I'd use it for, but I need one. And my mom did actually manage to find one when it was still around like $450 in the Damier bin, which is what I wanted it in. And she took it back to the store before Christmas because I also had a Strathsberry bag on my list. And she was like, no, she'll use the Strathsberry bag. She actually has a plan for that one. And my mother was correct. I'm not even sure if I would have used the mini pochette just because it's not something that I really need. Um, and now that it's up to like 750 bucks, there is no way I am paying 750 bucks for a small leather good. Just not happening. No way, absolutely not. That is insane for that tiny small pouch. And no, like, no. And a lot of people feel the same way because this is something that is readily available on the website now, whereas like you used to not be able to get your hands on it. And I think that that really says that an item's overpriced when it is so popular, when so many people are like, oh my gosh, like you have to have this classic piece and the classic piece is always in stock, probably a sign it's overpriced. And I think that these price increases have definitely put it at that point. Now, bag number five is going to be something that Again, it's slightly debatable on if it's a bag, but this is something that most people say is an entry-level piece at Chanel. It is the Chanel wallet on chain that is now $2,970, so with tax, over $3,000. For a wallet on a chain, people. Like, this thing doesn't hold much. It's not going to hold much. It's barely even a bag, and they are wanting to charge $3,000. This is why I have problems with Chanel, folks. Yeah, no, not happening. It, I don't, I don't care who you are. $3,000 is not an entry-level piece anywhere. That is way too expensive for a wallet on a chain, and they are just charging that price because of the CC on the front, because it's iconic and there is no way that I'm going to pay that for a wallet on a chain. Not happening. And no, it is not an entry level piece. And no, you do not need to have that piece either to be a luxury collector. And I think that that's another thing that's sort of interesting on this list is that I, the things that I'm just like, no, I'm never going to buy are a lot of pieces that everyone's like, oh my gosh, this is, this is a piece that you have to have. This is an ultimate piece that you need from this brand. And I've never bought into that in my life. And so that's something that I very much, that kind of already turns me off a little bit from something. But when I see these crazy price increases, it just totally turns me off even more. So 
If there is a piece that you have been feeling like you need to have because it's a classic piece but it's not a piece that you love, if you are turned off of a piece because of the price, don't buy it. There is nothing, there is no set amount of rules for what it is that you need to have in your luxury collection. My luxury collection is going to be perfectly complete without any of these five items. But also never let anyone talk you on the internet like me, talk you out of getting something that you truly love. If any of these five items are something that you really truly want, it doesn't matter if I don't think it's worth the price. If it's worth it to you, it's worth it to you. And with that, I hope you have a great rest of your day, YouTube. Bye.